What is up guys? We are back with another Revit video. And in this video, we'll be talking about, actually not Revit. <laughs> Surprisingly not Revit, we're gonna look at Inkscape. There's actually a new version to Inkscape, version 2.7, and we're gonna look at all the new features that come along with Inkscape 2.7. There's quite a lot to the update, and I'm really excited to share it all with you right now. I will say, to start things off, if you do learn something, Please demolish that like button. It really does help me a lot. It really does. Let's get right into it. If I come up here at the top, I'm in the Inkscape tab, and I'm in just a basic project, nothing special here, just a quickly modeled house. I'm going to go to my miscellaneous and about in the Inkscape tab, and you can see right here I've got Inkscape version 2.7. Perfect. That's what we're working with here. So first off, let's go ahead and start Inkscape. I I like to make specific views that are dedicated to Inkscape starting and to having a starting place and all that. So let's go do that. I'll hit start. So I've got Inkscape open here. And right off the bat, there, there's some things I want to point out. And this, these have to go along with the features, the new features. So looking at down here at the bottom, I can see I've, I've got BIM. What is that? That's interesting. BIM. If I press B, we can get BIM. That's awesome. I don't, we'll go over that in just a second. Perspective, uh, these these two different icons here are, were not there before. You, normally we were used to seeing like walk mode or fly mode. And I believe you would start in fly mode. So up here, we can see if I, I've got perspective and fly mode, there's my fly mode. And if I hit space bar, you could see that, that those wings that are symbolizing fly mode, I guess, are now feet to show I'm in walk mode. So that's a good way, as, as I hit space bar, you can see that they toggle back and forth. Perfect. But something else that's really nice is I've got perspective. I could, I've, of course, I'm in my perspective view, but now I can change from two point to two point view. Now before, I used to have to do this in the visual settings. Now it's built into the actual interface of Inkscape itself, which is great. And also, if you come over here at the bottom, you can see that there's an orthographic, and it says unavailable in walk mode. So let me hit space bar, and as soon as I do that, I can see I've got orthographic. And so what is orthographic? You, if you do rendering out of Inkscape very often, you might have been wanting to be able to get a, like a perfect plan view or a perfect elevation view to get that straight on look and to not have any perspective to it because if you if you're working in Revit, I'm going to go back to Revit for just a second. You can see this is actually an orthographic view. And if I go to my top view, yeah, there's a lot in this model, but if I go to my top view, this is I, I have this orthographic top view and you know it's not a perspective view because everything is to scale, it's still to scale. There's no like warping. It may be hard a little bit hard to tell here, but as you look straight down there's no warping in any of the any of the walls because even though we're like really high, but if I go back to Inkscape, now I've got this orthographic option, and this I would say is one of the biggest parts of this this update in 2.7. As soon as I click that, we're gonna get shot out <laughs> into space. It looks like, and and I can actually let me go ahead and zoom in here. Once I zoom in, you can clearly see now what we're working with. Now I've I've got this perfect straight on view. And just like before, I can move and orbit around, but it looks kind of weird. It's kind of funny and awkward, but you also might notice that it looks a bit like Revit. So, like, if I were to orbit around in Revit, this is what it would look like because, again, I'm in an orthographic view. There's no perspective to this. Everything's flat and to scale. If you also look at the bottom, my navigation settings changed, and I've got some standard views I can work with. This is the best part. Now you might say, how would you get those those perfect straight on views if you wanted like a an elevation here or if you wanted to look at a, a plan from the top or like a site plan, you would actually use these standard views. So you can still move with all the, the WASD, EQ, whatever it is, you can zoom around and move and all that. Um, I wouldn't necessarily use the the left mouse button to look around because you looking around here is it's really kind of crazy, especially if you have a large model. So I would use the right click and hold that to orbit around. That will be just orbiting normally. And of course, you can pan by pressing and holding the middle mouse button and zooming still. But I want to focus in on the standard views. That's fantastic. So let's go ahead 
And if, actually, if you look at this real quick, you can start to see that this kind of looks like a house. So the eight up here is like the straight on view of a house. The four is a left, five is actually the top. You can see like the gables of the roof there. Six is the other side. And number two is, I believe, the bottom. So I'm going to, and these numbers are referring to the number pad numbers. And I, let's go ahead and see if it works with the actual numbers on the keyboard too. But I use the number pad just because it makes sense. And it's set up like the number pad. So let's go ahead and click five. So as soon as I hit five, I need to zoom out. And because, of course, I'm in a weird place as a giant model. But I'm going to pan up here and zoom in to the to right over the house. Of course, as soon as I, I start moving around with the actual mouse button, I, I'm going to lose that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit five again. And as soon as I do that, I can start to see that I'm actually in a site plan view, which is fantastic. And as I zoom in, you can see this is like the perfect orthographic view of a site plan. And this is like 100% comparable to what your site plan would look like in Revit because, again, it's not perspective. That's perfect. Now, if I go to number eight, we get the, the back side. And this is the back elevation. I can zoom in. And, guys, this looks really good. <laughs> you're gonna get some really nice rendered elevations really quick because again, this is, it's the same as anything else in Inkscape because you can quickly render. I can go to four, of course I'm flying off here again, but again, I, this is a really great looking side view of this model, my gosh. And of course it's too big for our own good, but once I zoom in here, we can really see that this is this is some high quality elevations, the, the type of view that we didn't have access to before. You could, you could get to this kind of elevation-like view, but because we didn't have like actual orthographic views, you couldn't achieve this exactly. And, and you could definitely not feel good about that. <laughs> so that's gonna do it for the orthographic views. I, again, I think they're, they are fantastic. And I'm gonna end up using this so much, so much. Again, I've gone, I'm changed back to perspective, and I'm going to go ahead and double click to get back to reality here. And I'm looking at my building. So the next big thing, and really big, really exciting thing that is now built into Inkscape 2.7 is again this BIM button, B. So if I hit B, what happens? I get this completely separate interface that pops up on the side that's in addition to what we were already used to seeing, but now as I highlight over any element in, in my Inkscape view, in my Inkscape window, I now, it, it actually highlights that specific element. And these elements are directly related to my Revit model, and it's actually going to pull that information from the Revit model. So if I wanna know the information about this wall, or maybe I don't know it's a wall, I, in this case I don't have materials applied, so what is this? I can click on this and I can clearly see that I've got this partition and I've got everything, every single parameter that Revit is holding, all the data built in within that element is showing up here on the left for me to look at. Now, this is this is a bit overwhelming because, you know, it's it's a lot of information about this one wall that I've selected. But in but I will say this is everything in Revit, as far as data goes, about this specific element. If you really wanted to see the, like, where is this and where is it going, like, let, let's go inside. So I'm gonna go inside here and let's select this wall. And so maybe this, this could be like a 12 story building and you're in this space with your client and you see, well, what is this wall? Okay, or what is this thing if you don't have materials? This thing is this particular partition. Well. You know, how high does it go? Where, where is it spanning? Like, where does it start? Where does it end? Well, you can clearly see the base constraints, level one. I've got my top constraint, level two. Again, it's all the information that is built into Revit and displayed in Revit to, for this specific element. It's awesome. It gives you everything you need. It can tell you what they are. This is a lamp. No kidding. This is an, this is, happens to be an Inkscape asset, and I can see it right there. It's my Inkscape asset. I've got this entire dining set. It's just, it tells you absolutely everything you need to know. So I'm going to go back outside here. And to continue on with this, this BIM, I can actually, if you, if you look at it a little further, I can 
start to collapse all of these different sections here. And if we look at these at a greater detail and we start to look at them, they actually perfectly align with the categories built into Revit. So again, it's pulling all this information out of your Revit model into Inkscape. So if we want to look at, let's say, curtain panels, for, ex for example, I can highlight over all of these single types and I can see where all this type of curtain panel, in this case just basic vision, is located. And th there's not a whole lot I can do beyond that, but I can highlight, I can see where all of those instances are in Inkscape. I can take this a step further and now I can see all 67 of those instances. <laughs> Like this is fantastic. I know this is kind of crazy because, you know, you you'll ha you may inevitably have hundreds of different curtain panels here, and that's perfectly fine. But just like you can select them here this way, I can go ahead and select it right there, and I can get my information. But it's also going to populate and tell me where it is here. It, absolutely awesome because I've got everything that I need as far as the model elements, what they are. I've got all the description and the data built in. So this is going to allow presentations to be like taken to the next level. So now you can you can stop down in the middle of your presentation if a client says, what is that? Or how high does it go? Or what is this material? Is it that? You can see absolutely everything. So I can click on this panel, for example, and I can see what the material is. Now I don't have a material applied, but you could, you could do that for absolutely anything. All the data, all the information is built in now. And as soon as I hit the X up here, I'm going to return to my basic Enscape that we're all used to, that's perfect. Something else new with Inkscape 2.7 is that they've added some additional assets. Eh, you know, they seem to add new assets every time they have an update, which is fine. And I, we all like that because they're, they're good looking assets. I don't know why they don't show up in the new, but hey, that's just what I'm, <laughs> I would say put them in the new. That might make a little more sense. So some of these lamps are new, that's fine. They're, they're pretty cool. Um, I wouldn't necessarily know where to use these in a, I wouldn't necessarily use all of these, but some really nice new lamps, uh, street props. There's actually a lot of new street props and they are mainly with these surrounding buildings. I think they want to call them. And it's literally like an entire building that it, you can basically use to build your site. And it's going to be nice because depending on where you are, it's, it's just, it's going to allow your seems to look a little more real even if you have a couple of houses or apartments off in the distance it's just it's something little it, it's nice and that's not a big thing but just something else in Inkscape 2.7 another exciting new feature to Inkscape 2.7 is going to be rendering it has to do with rendering so before you'd have to go to render image and you'd you know you'd actually just render that one scene that you're looking at in Inkscape okay that's perfect. That makes sense. We all know how to do that. We've done that before. But what is actually new? Well, when I go to this render image, we can see that I've got all these different views that are there. These are all my 3D views in this project. And you can see that I've got a drop down for my project. I might have multiple projects open and I can see all the views from all those projects. So the nice thing about this is it's actually a batch rendering. And so what is batch? A batch process is just something that's going to execute across multiple different files, multiple different instances. It's going to do the same thing over and over again for everything you select. So in this case, batch rendering is going to say, all right, how, how many views do you want to render and what specific views? Well, in this case, I can select whichever view I want. Just like, you know, you're in Windows Explorer, you can select control and select these specific ones. You can hold shift and select all of them. There's a really nice way up here that we have built into this render image dialog box that we can select all the CAD views. In this case, CAD views is referring to just all the 3D views, or you can select all your favorited views. And I have not chosen to select, uh, have 3D view as a favorite. And you can see I don't have a star next to it. And these favorite views are going to be the same views that show up in our views tab here. Of course, we've got our start, we've got our back, our front, our side one, side two. Okay, so all of those are different views that I have to work with. And maybe the idea with this batch rendering is that maybe you do some new iterations to the model, the design, 
you apply different materials, whatever it might be, and you've got a presentation that includes all of these views. Well, you can simply render, and I'm gonna save them in this just whatever location, and it's gonna batch render. It's basically gonna render out all of those different views. That's awesome. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this because I don't need to do that right now. But the last thing you might be wondering is how do I apply a specific, you know, the visual settings <laughs> to those specific views because you know what you want to do is you want to get these views set up for a presentation and like I said before maybe you have gone through some iterations more iterations more design changes everything you've updated the model and you need to re-render all these images what we can do is utilize our visual settings and create some presets that we can apply to those specific views so that every time we batch render those views, I have the exact same view settings for each one of those views, and maybe they're different. So what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna go through all the settings, but I am gonna go through and make some new presets. So if I go to presets, and I, I'm fine with all the information here as far as the settings, I can go to presets, I can go save preset, and now we've got this saved project, which is kind of interesting because we used to have to save these presets as a file, a JSON file and it would be stored somewhere on your computer and in something you'd have to track or move and that's that's fine you can still do it that way but now we can have it built into the project and I will say I'm not exactly sure where this is saved I imagine it's it's some of the you know your user apps app data all that I'm sure it's in your documents basically documents but besides that we can save it to this project it's going to be in a way behind the scenes, but it's also built into the project. So every time you open this project and work with this project in Inkscape, you're gonna have access to these view settings. So I'm gonna go to save to project and it's, I'm, all I need to do is name it. So let's go ahead and name this front because we've got a front view. I'll hit okay, perfect. And let's say I, I wanna tweak the exposure. And again, I would obviously be looking at my exposure my Inkscape window when I'm doing this, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna make another preset. I'm gonna save this one, make sure to save it to the project, and I'm gonna save this as back, perfect. So now I've got these two pre presets. If I go to manage presets, I can see I've got, for this specific project, remember, I've got back and front, perfect. And so how would I use these and how would I apply these to the views? I could actually come up here now, and again, it looks the exact same. I could, I've got a drop down for each project, and I've just had one project open, but now I've got this linked visual settings to this CAD view. So remember, we just made a front and a back. So I can go, I can say, I want to bind or attach which of the view settings that I have to that view. Well, this is front, so I wanna call this front. So as soon as I do that, I can see that I this tells me, this icon being lit up, tells me that I have visual settings applied to that specific view. Now I can also apply the same front view to this back, but I also want to apply it back to this back. So I've got the correct visual settings applied to this back view and this front view. Of course, I can come into side one and I can apply the front to it. If it applies, great. So I can I have all of these settings that are the exact same based on my presets for those that I've already set up. And if I come to presets, I can go ahead and load presets and I can start to change these presets. So I can go to back and actually let's go to front. And as soon as I do that, you can see that my exposure changed because that's all I changed. So let's go ahead and load the front. Okay. And I wanna, let's make that 100% exposed. And I'll come in here, I'll do save preset save the project and I want to just overwrite this so I'll call this front I'll hit okay and this said do you want to overwrite it okay perfect now as soon as I go to load preset I can come and I can click back and you can see that now my back is getting still where it was but my front is at 50 as now at 100 percent that's perfect and then again all of this information because these settings are applied to these specific views where I want them they're still applied and I you know closing the project, saving it, whatever, it's all gonna be embedded within the project because that's that's a new feature. That's the new feature of 2.7. And then you can go back and batch render all of that over again and you've got the same settings, everything you're working with. So all you need to do is update your model. <laughs> that is awesome. And again, you can apply all of these to the orthographic views, to, to perspective, like two point perspective, all of that can be applied and you can get exactly what you want regardless. All of these can be applied within the, the visual settings. 
of those views. The last couple of things that are new with Inkscape and 2.7 is that they've improved some clouds. Like they've got the way the, way the clouds look, it's a little better. You've got a, a little more detail in that. Some of the area lights are improved. So great, the lighting's just overall better. So that is going to do it for what is new in Inkscape 2.7. So if you did learn something and you enjoyed this video, do demolish that like button. That really does help. And if you stuck around this long, you're awesome. You really rock. I, I can't imagine why you would have stuck around this long, but either way, you're awesome. Also, change the phase of that subscribe button to existing. That always does help. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you have any questions, please ask those there. I, I hope you enjoy this video because I've got lots more InScape videos coming out. I'm going to go through just absolutely everything that you might want and need to know when it comes to Inkscape. All the different kinds of settings and buttons, what they all do, navigation. It's just all of that's so important. And it, honestly, it's a pretty easy program, but once you get the hang of it, it's so useful. So please be on the lookout for all of those new Inkscape videos. I sure hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.